Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be doing a little bit more of a simpler video, um, but it's a really interesting topic and I think you guys will really enjoy it. Today we're going to be discovering or solving for the integral of square root 1 minus x squared dx. And uh, many of you would probably just immediately think to use tricks up on this. Uh, you can also do it using integration by parts relatively easily. But today we're going to be taking it to the next level. We're not going to be using any trig sub, any integration by parts. In fact, we're not even going to use integration. Um, I say no calculus needed. Obviously, we do need a little bit of calculus in everything. It, it is related to calculus topics, but the method that we're going to use requires no actual integration. And you'll see what I mean soon enough. So buckle in and let's get started on the video. So first, we're just going to consider a very general case of this situation. Uh, we're going to just talk about the integral from 0 to x of square root 1 minus t squared dt. And obviously, in this case, uh, we're talking about 0 is less than x is less than 1. Oh, I guess it could be equal to, right? And so what we're going to do here is we're going to draw a picture of what this function looks like. So Hopefully you guys are familiar with, um, you know, this function square root one minus t squared. You know that it just looks like a semicircle. So this is a semicircle of radius one. And since we have some positive x here, I'll just go ahead and draw in x over here. So let's say that x is somewhere around here. Obviously it could be somewhere else, but we're just using this as a visualization. So this is going to be x. This is zero. This is one. This is negative one. And this is 1 right here, y equals 1. So we're just going to go ahead and show what this integral represents. So this integral represents the area under the curve between 0 and x. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and redraw this semicircle because I didn't really exactly do it to semicircle-like. But, yeah, it's going to look something like that. All right, that looks a little bit better. So now... Usually to find the area under the curve, we would just do the integral, you know, do our trig sub integration by parts, whatever it is we need to use in order to solve for that area. But in this case, we're going to solve for the integral, the uh, indefinite integral, by solving for the area geometrically. So in general, when we're trying to find the area of a shape, this shape is a bit of an interesting shape. The first thing we want to do is split it up into different sets of triangles and rectangles because uh, when you, whenever you have a polygon, that's really the, w the way to go when you're solving it. Now, in this case, that's not going to be so simple because we do have this kind of circular area which can't be split up into um, uh, polygons. Now, obviously, we can uh, sort of split it up into infinitesimally small triangles or something like that, but doing that is going to... Uh, require us to do more calculus, more integrals, right? So what if we try cutting it like this? Well, if we cut the piece like this, then we're still going to end up with this area on top that's kind of curved. Uh, it's kind of smaller, so you could maybe make an approximation of the area, and it would be pretty accurate for small x. But as you get to larger x, it wouldn't exactly uh, work out. So we want to figure out another way to split up this integral, or split up this area. So one way we could do that is we could take the area of the full half circle here, which we know is just pi over 4, since this is 1 quarter of a circle of radius 1. But then we would need to subtract out this area here, and the only way to solve for that area is to, again, take the integral. So let's look at one last trick that we have for splitting this up. If I take a diagonal line right here and cut it exactly right here, and then I erase this line, I've actually split it up into two very nice looking shapes. On the right here, I have a triangle. I'll just call this um, A, area A, right? And uh, solving for the area of a triangle is exceptionally easy. We can do that pretty easily. And then we have a circular sector right here. So I'll call this B. And also solving for the area of a circular sector is also very easy since it's just some section of a circle. You just need to know the angle inside. So I'll call this angle theta. All right, so now let's try and solve for this area. So this integral is going to be equal to a plus b. a is super easy to solve for because all we do have to do is 1 half base times height. So that's 1 half, and then our base is just x, and our height is the value of the function at that point, which is square root 1 minus x squared. 
And you can see that this kind of would come from integration by parts if you were to do that doing normal integration methods. Next, let's look at the area of the circle, circular sector. So first off, the area of a circular sector is very easy um, once you know the angle. So I'm just going to write this in terms of theta. It's just going to be uh, theta over 2, right? Because if you think about it, as the circle goes from as the angle goes from 0 to 2 pi, when it finishes at pi, or when the angle gets to 2 pi, the total area should be pi. So that means it would be theta over 2, and it's just proportional to the amount of the uh, angle that you have. The only thing left to do is solve for this angle b. And that's actually super easy as well, because we already know the sides to this um, triangle here. So we know that this height right here, or actually, no, that's not what we're solving for here. We can actually really easily figure out this angle right here, which I'll call alpha. And of course, clearly, uh, theta plus alpha equals 90 degrees, or pi over 2. And alpha is super easy to solve for because as we, we, we know that this side length is just 1, and that this side length is just x right here. And so you can see that cosine of alpha would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is just x over 1, which is x. So that means that theta equals pi over 2 minus alpha. So we could say that, or actually we could say alpha equals pi over 2 minus theta. So that means that cosine of pi over 2 minus theta equals x, or sine of theta equals x, which means that theta equals arc sine of x. So I'm going to go ahead and move our findings onto the next slide. So this is what we just solved for. We just solved for the integral from 0 to x of this function. Now that doesn't necessarily tell us the uh, complete integral because, um, you know, obviously this is a definite integral so we could have stuff canceling at the top and bottom. However, I will tell you that it's pretty easy to show in this case um, that the integral from a to b of square root 1 minus t squared dt is this function of b minus this function of a, right? So that's relatively easy to show just by subtracting the areas and subtracting the integrals and using properties of integrals. And you can also just differentiate this answer and find that that is in fact the solution to the integral. So this is actually the first way that I learned to integrate um, the function square root 1 minus t squared. I didn't learn trig sub until much later. And uh, I hadn't learned integration by parts either by that point. But uh, I just think it's a really interesting way to take a look at a calculus problem and, and solve it using geometry and using just like logic and reasoning, right? Because generally, when we're solving these types of problems, we take uh, it's more of some logical or reasoning problem, and then we, we will end up using calculus to solve that problem, but we actually kind of turned it around in this situation. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.